Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rostow. May 31 is observed as World No Tobacco Day. Pan American Health Organization's advisor, non-communicable diseases and mental health, Dr. Michelle A. Harris, she joins us to discuss practical applications beyond the day. Welcome, Dr. Harris. Thank you so much for making the time. I want us to start off getting an idea of the importance of a day like World No Tobacco Day, please. Thank you very much. And thank you for inviting us to be a part of this. World No Tobacco Day is celebrated, as you mentioned, every year on May 31, which is a time when we pause to reflect and contemplate that time when the world would no longer be affected by uh, the, the harm that tobacco brings to the health of the population, to the environment, and also to the financial well-being of the very pe persons who use it. And the fact that you talk about the environment is interesting to me, and we'll get to it in just a bit, but the theme this year is remind us of the theme, please, and how that kind of ties into that rationale. Yes, the theme this year is let's grow food, not tobacco. And it's very important because across the world, there are 124 countries that produce tobacco as crash crops. So even though in Trinidad and Tobago, tobacco is not produced, in many other parts of the world where it is produced, there is the impact of the the growing of this this product uh, on the health and the well-being of the people so you have uh, it's a very labor intensive crop so lots of persons are involved in the development and in the growth of the crop and the use of the lands for tobacco then prevents the use of plants to produce Food stuff. So where there is food insecurity um, in several of these very countries where, where tobacco is being grown, this if the crops were used if, or the lands were used to produce food, it's likely that there will be less food insecurity. I should also mention that there are lots of pesticides and that are used and and fertilizers used in the production of tobacco. And these can damage the environment, the very, the very lands on which the farming takes place and makes it difficult for the use of these lands for food in the future. It makes me want to ask how much work it takes to rehabilitate land if you're going to move from tobacco to another crop. Uh, it, it seems as though it's very different from things like I almost said gongo, from pigeon peas that would put nitrates, put nitrogen in the soil. It seems that though tobacco takes a lot out of it. Uh, what kind of work is needed to, to get that soil, to get that land back to uh, a point where you can grow other things, like the food you're talking about? What I can tell you is that it drastically reduces the fertility, the soil fertility, after the use of, of tobaccos on, on that land. And also even in the, the planting and the manufacturing, the exposure of, the, of those who are involved. And we have in certain parts of the world where children, children are taken out of school to, to participate in the, the, the production of tobacco. And so these things are counter to providing for the health and well, the health and well-being of the population. I must hasten to say that even though Trinidad and Tobago does not um, produce uh, tobacco, what we are encouraging is that the tobacco importing countries should also be a part of advocating for the, um, the reduction of the production of, of tobacco, you know, so that um, these and even, lands and, even, and this, this these times and, and the usage can be towards the production of food and not um, tobacco. 
And I'm really glad we're having this conversation, uh, Dr. Harris, because many times when people talk about tobacco, they talk about cigarettes, uh, there is a focus on what tobacco can do to a human body versus what it can do to the environment. And let, let's, let's pursue that part of the conversation a little bit in terms of making that distinction between tobacco itself, because there is, there is dialogue, there's conversation. People say it's not really to the tobacco, you know, it's the additives, it's the thing, it's the other things that is put in cigarettes that really affect the body. So what do you say to that? How do you make, is there a distinction to be made? We do know that there are a number of different chemicals and substances that are included in the typical tobacco cigarette. There is the nicotine, which comes from the tobacco plant, which is very addictive. And this is what co um, contributes to persons continuing to use the tobacco. So that's one. Then there are a number of additives. More, there are so many different chemicals, known and, un and unknown, that are included, and the, the, the idea of using a filter is a, totally a myth, you know, because those, those substances are, uh, in, are get into the body and can cause a number of different conditions. We are all familiar. We, we are very familiar with the, its impact on the lungs um, and the, the, the increased risk of uh, developing lung cancer but it also affects um, cancers from many different parts of the body, the, the, the lips, the tongue, the, um, so, so many other parts of the body. It also contributes to cardiovascular disease because of the narrowing of the arteries and the vessels. It also contributes to, 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 um, to cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attacks, and so on, asthma. And we know that more than 8 million persons annually are affected, uh, de deaths for, uh, there are deaths of more than 8 million persons from tobacco. That includes those who are direct smokers, as well as those who are secondhand smokers. So there's nothing positive about the way, about the use of tobacco. And Dr. Harris, funnily enough, we're speaking right now, and it, I almost feel grateful that about 23 years ago, a car picked me up and fling me away. In terms like I was walking and a car bounced me down, broke my leg, because the doctor at the time said that uh, using tobacco, the nicotine would actually retard the, the regeneration of the bone. So I said, doctor, say less. And there was no was no, no real list. cigarettes again for me in life. You laughing, so take it, take it. That's part of the reason we're talking now. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So what we also need to look at and, and to recall that there, in addition to the traditional um, cigarette smoking, now we have all the, the use of electronic devices. And the, 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 the suggestion is that it is less... Um, negative on has a, le a, a less negative effect on the body and on the on the person who use them, but this the in addition to the the nicotine that is in there, there again there are lots of of chemicals that are added. Even now they they are targeting younger persons, young children, so they put a lot of flavors, so that it it it, it it seems to be something that is recreational. And so to try to attract more persons to use these, these devices and the effects on the, on the human body are negative, no, no less than the effects of the, the traditional cigarette smoking. And you, you, many, you're saying that, and I, and I think it is something that always has been happening, uh, be it from leaving or positioning uh, the cartons, the cigarette cartons, close and low down, where, where they're within the reach of certain people in terms of trying to expand the target audience. 
uh, to the flavors that you're talking about. It feels as though there's always something and it's definitely a method in the madness. But speaking of that method, we're going to take a short break. I want us to talk about the, some of the campaign objectives uh, for, the, for this campaign when we return from the break. And I guess that even includes countries that do not produce tobacco as one of their products, one of those 124 countries. But we are speaking with Dr. Michelle Harris. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Pan American Health Advisor, Non-Communicable Diseases and Mental Health, Dr. Michelle Harris. And we want to talk about the campaign a little bit, please, in terms of World No Tobacco Day. So what are some of those objectives, those incremental objectives that are going with the campaign that, that are in train? Okay. Let me start by saying two things. One is that as the the pressure mounts. They find that the tobacco industry is moving away from the high and middle income countries and moving more so to the low and middle income countries to produce tobacco. Because of the, as the rules and regulations tighten at one end, they just move where there, there are less regulations to prevent the, the tobacco growth. The second thing I want to make, a, make an important point is that this year marks 20 years since the, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, which is an international treaty to uh, prevent and to regulate the use of tobacco as it impacts on health and well-being of the populations. Moving on to the specific campaign objectives, this year, the objectives are to mobilize governments to end the subsidies on tobacco growing and use savings for crop substitution, to raise awareness in tobacco farming communities about the benefits of moving away from tobacco. Of course, that does not, those two do not apply directly to Trinidad and Tobago, but we're speaking about in the general sense, to support the efforts to combat decertification and environmental degradation caused by using tobacco. And finally, to expose the industry efforts to obstruct sustainable livelihood work. So that's what's happening in the areas where the tobacco is being grown and the countries where tobacco is not being grown, but that are tobacco uh, important countries, we are encouraging the countries to observe the very articles within the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. A number of them refer to increased taxes on cigarettes and tobacco products, which in lead to a, reduce, a reduction in the use of tobacco among some members of the population. And it also has a benefit of bringing in revenue to the, to the coffers, the government coffers. So there are a number of different articles under the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control that we would encourage the non-tobacco con producing countries to strengthen and to, to implement even while we are working on this campaign among the countries that do produce tobacco. Thank you. And is there a hierarchy on the ways in which we do that? Because sometimes I hear a great deal about Syntax. So you're raising taxes on like cigarettes and possibly alcohol. But if that is the only thing that is done, I think sometimes you, you might have people grumble for a while and say, and and make these noises for a little bit, and then they go back because they say, okay, well, this is something that I need. Uh, is there anything else within those objectives that you think we can put a little more emphasis on to get this sort of, uh, to get the outcome that is being, being sought? Certainly. The Framework Convention on Tobacco Control has 38 articles, and the raising of taxes, etc., is just one of them. Another would be to work, and this is a cross-cutting article, Article 5.3, which is to work with, 
to prevent tobacco interference on public health and, um, and tobacco control policies. There is the article that refers to the banning of tobacco advertising, promotions, and sponsorships. And that's another one. But all of these things that several of the countries within the, the Caribbean region and the region of the Americas have signed on to this treaty and are implementing a little at a time. So in terms of hierarchy, there are a number of things that the country will do when the country is ready. You know, we, we, are, we are here to come alongside the country and to, you know, to ensure that they're reminded of the, the treaty that was signed some time ago. Another is the, the, um, the smoke-free spaces. Now, that is something that has been established here in Trinidad and Tobago, and we're very um, happy that the country has moved forward with that article. There is the, the, the use of plain packaging for the cigarettes and the use of warning labels on the, the, the cigarette, cigarette boxes. And so some, those are some of the, of the articles within the treaty that have been achieved we could, we could commonly refer to them as the low-hanging fruit. But with time, you would expect that the, the country would see it fit to adopt more and more of those articles within the framework convention on tobacco control. And Dr. Harris, I've been holding back for a little bit. And I know that you cannot speak to government's action from the seat that you sit at. But looking at the fact that you also deal with mental health, do you, think, do you see potential for engaging this sort of action from a mental health perspective as well, as opposed to just uh, physical or individuals or governmental policy. Oh well, certainly we look at it in a very in in we look at the whole person. So we, we, what the, this tobacco smoking and um, the, the re reduction of the in the use of tobacco products would be of benefit to the physical and mental well-being of the person. And we don't forget the economic situation. Um, we have, uh, and I must say, the, the, here in Trinidad and especially in the South, they have a number of tobacco cessation clinics. And we've learned that one of the, one of the things that is shared with the, the, with, with the members or, or the community persons when they come in is the cost that it would have taken for them to have smoked for this many years, you know, to show what, how it has impacted on their finances. So we look at the whole person, physical, mental, their economic well-being. And, and we know, if I may speak to the, the sponsorship and advertising, we, we know that the tobacco company has resources at their disposal, but when they make this available, what it costs the government to, to care for um, someone who is um, diagnosed with lung cancer, um, it, cardiovascular diseases, it's, it's what they contribute is minuscule compared to the, the expenditure to, to care for the members of the population who are suffering from the ill effects of tobacco use. So these are all different areas within the framework convention of tobacco control that we want to focus on. And the country will make that decision at what point in time they're able to uh, embrace the different ones. And we want, to, um, we want to thank you for embracing the time to speak with us, Dr. Michelle A. Harris, non-communicable diseases and mental health Ad Paho advisor and we want to thank you this has been TTT or this has been in depth with me DK Rossa on TTT on behalf of the entire news team thank you so much for joining us